Aloha, everyone. I have a question for you today. Are you ready for eternity? Are you ready for eternity? And what am I talking about? Well, hi, I'm Brian Ashpole, uh, pastor at Honolulu Assembly of God here in beautiful Honolulu, near world-famous Diamond Head. It's Wednesday, February 8th, and I'm excited, friends. I'm excited because we're looking at incredible scripture passages all this month of February that have the potential to be life-changing. That's right, friend. That is right. If you apply these powerful truths to your life, they can change your life. And today's powerful, life-changing truth comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. In the New Testament, Paul's second letter to the Church of Corinth, chapter 4. Well, let's think about that question. Are you ready for eternity? Are you ready for eternity? What in the world am I talking about? Well, on Saturday, just four days ago, my wife's mother unexpectedly passed away. It was quite a shock. Now, Grandma was 93 and a half years old, but surprisingly sharp and healthy for her age. For example, she still drove her car at 93 and a half years old. Can you believe it? Going once a week to work in an office. Plus, she drove each week to a salon to get her hair done. She often said that she planned to live to be 100 years old, and I did not doubt her uh, for a moment that she might make it. Grandma lived almost 2,700 miles away, so we did not get to see her as often as we would have liked, but we were able to visit last summer and travel with her to the other side of the state, uh, about 270 miles away or so, for a large family reunion that she loved. I mean, family was very important to her. Plus, there were many phone calls since then, since last summer, as well as video calls at both Thanksgiving and Christmas. Well, thankfully, Grandma's passing was very quick and very peaceful, and she was able to die in her home, which she very much wanted. And, you know, she was very, uh, very certain that she wanted to die in her home, and it was a blessing that it happened that way. So, um, so that was good. But most of all, Grandma knew Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior, so we know where she is right now. You know, Grandma's unexpected and quick passing reminds us that none of us have a guarantee for tomorrow. None of us have a guarantee for tomorrow. Now, you might be a lot younger, and probably are a lot younger than 93 years old, but any day, even today, could be your last day. So you must be ready for eternity, friends. You need to be ready for eternity. Ecclesiastes 3, chapter 3, verse 11 in the Old Testament tells us that he, meaning God, has made everything beautiful in its time. Wonderful statement. And it goes on to say he has also set eternity in the human heart. He set eternity in our hearts. So the question remains, are you ready for eternity, friends? Are you ready for eternity? The brilliant author C.S. Lewis noted this, a great, great statement. Anything by him is outstanding. If I find in myself desires which nothing in this world can satisfy, the only logical explanation is that I was made for another world. I was made for another world. Friends, if you're a Christian, the, that world is waiting for you. There's a home in eternity in heaven waiting for you. Jesus said he was preparing a place for you. He's making it ready for you. But the question is, are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? Now, I've shared previously that uh, along with my morning Bible and prayer time each day, I read several devotionals. And one is by Max Lucado. Max Lucado is a New York Times best-selling Christian author. I mean, he sold millions of books, 130 million books. That's a lot of books. Everything, you know, it's not surprising. Everything from Max writes is absolutely outstanding. I re recommend anything and everything to you. Max really has a way with words. And he describes eternity this way in his 365-day devotion. God is with you every day. I mean, he touches on eternity a lot in a lot, of, a lot of these devotions, but this is Max's selection for August 25. And he writes, he entitles it, God Doesn't Let Go. Many Christians live with a deep-seated anxiety about eternity. They think they are saved, hope they are saved, but still they doubt, wondering, am I really saved? Our behavior gives us reason to wonder. We are strong one day, weak the next. Devoted one hour, flagging the next, believing and unbelieving. Conventional wisdom draws a line through the middle of these fluctuations. Perform above this line and enjoy God's acceptance. But dip below it and expect a ping slip from heaven. In this paradigm, a person is lost and saved multiple times a day. Salvation becomes a matter of timing. 
you just hope you die on an upswing. What a great, what a great thought from uh, Max Lucchetti. You just hope you die on an upswing. No security, no stability or confidence. This is not God's plan, Max emphasizes. This is not God's plan. He draws the line for sure, but he draws it beneath our ups and downs. Jesus' language couldn't be stronger. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never lose it or perish throughout the ages, and no one is able to snatch them out of my hand. John 10, chapter 10, verse 28, and amplify. What a great, what a great promise. And Max Lucado concludes with, God doesn't let go. Wow, what a beautiful reminder from Max Lucado. Isn't that, isn't that great? Uh, we're looking at, as I mentioned, second, uh, Corinthians chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, we can start with, the, go look at the last three verses of that chapter, and uh, the Apostle Paul starts with, therefore, chap, 2 Corinthians 4, 16, therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. Outwardly we are wasting away, physically, friends, we have aches and pains, and the older you get, the more you have, I mean, that's just a... That's just a fact. But Paul reminds us inwardly, spiritually, we're being renewed every single day. We're being made new every day. And I love the next phrase, uh, verse 17. For our light and momentary troubles, our light and momentary afflictions are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Oh, wow, isn't that great? All the problems, all the troubles, all the afflictions, all the adversity, all the obstacles in your life. Are worth it because Jesus is using them all in your life. God is shaping you into his image. He's shaping you into the image of Christ every day and he's using those difficult things in your life to help you become the person he wants to be. Paul finishes it out with verse 18. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary but what is unseen is eternal we fix our eyes not on what is unseen but what is not on what is seen but on what is unseen see what is seen is temporary but what is unseen is eternal this world is chasing after what it can see it's chasing after the good life the stuff money sex and power everything else but paul reminds his friends that everything we can see is temporary it's it's temporary Everything we can attain in this world, it's temporary. It's not going to last. You know, you will either lose it or it will grow old and tarnish or be overcome by mold and mildew or it's going to rust, the Bible says. And if it escapes that, someday it's going to all burn. It's going to all burn. But that which is unseen is eternal. It's going to last forever. Friend. What is greatest is what will last for all eternity. It's the spiritual things. Those are the things that are going to last. Your soul. Your relationship with Jesus Christ, worshiping Him, serving Him, that's that's what's going to, enjoying His presence, that's what's going to last for all eternity. So be ready for eternity. Live ready for eternity, both today and every single day. If you have repented of your sins and declared Jesus Christ your Savior and Lord, then you have nothing to fear, friends, both for now and for the future, for all eternity. You know, if you're looking to Jesus alone to save you, you know, it's not your works, not your efforts, but that he took your place of judgment. He took your place of punishment and suffering when he died upon the cross. He was your great subject. Then you can be absolutely certain of that you're ready for eternity. Assuredly, you can be absolutely certain. Assuredly, undoubtedly, undeniably ready. The home in heaven that Jesus is preparing for you, it's yours. It's yours. It probably even has your name on it. But I know one place that definitely has your name, and it's the Lamb's Book of Life. Is your name written there? Are you ready for eternity? Isn't that beautiful, friend? That's powerful. That can change your life. Are you ready for eternity? Are you ready for eternity? Be ready for eternity. Live ready for eternity. And it's going to be exciting. Eternity is going to be exciting. Jesus has great things planned for you. You know, things planned that are beyond your imagination. How could it be anything less? If he was willing to die on a cross for you, you can believe that he has wonderful things planned for you, glorious things, magnificent things, friends. It is not going to be boring. Now, have you ever heard of Bruce Coburn? 
Bruce Coburn is a Canadian singer, songwriter, and guitarist who's written more than 350 songs and 34 albums over a career spanning 50 years. And 22 of those albums have received the Canadian Gold or Platinum certification as of 2018. I mean, this guy sells a lot of records. Raised as an agnostic early in his music career, Coburn became a Christian. You can see the Christian theme in, in a lot of his music. I, I mainly knew one song, I remember it well. Uh, it was in 1979, Coburn wrote the song, Wondering Where the Lines Are. And the opening closing lines go like this. First line, sun's up, uh -huh. looks okay, the world survives into another day, and I'm thinking about eternity. Some kind of ecstasy got a hold on me. He goes out of the next lines, uh, next stanza, I had another dream about lions at the door. They weren't half as frightening as they were before, but I'm thinking about eternity. Some kind of ecstasy got a hold on me. It goes on for a few stanzas until the last one goes like this. Freighters on the knot on the surface of the bay. One of these days we're going to sail away, going to sail into eternity. Some kind of ecstasy got a hold on me, and I'm wondering where the lions are. I'm wondering where the lions are. Friends, eternity with Jesus is going to be exciting. You don't have to worry about any lions, any lions, and anything that's going to be like that. Isn't that beautiful, friends? <laughs> that can change your life. Are you ready for eternity? Are you ready for eternity? It's coming whether you're ready or not, so please be ready for it. It's, that is so important, friends. The most important question is, is this, is Jesus Christ in charge of your life? Is he your Savior and Lord? Is he your Redeemer? Have you surrendered your life completely to him? I want to challenge you, friends. Repent of your sin. Declare Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. Put all your faith and trust in him. That's the place to begin. And do it today, friends. Do it today. Don't wait till tomorrow or next week or next month. Do it today. Please do it today, and you'll be ready for eternity. Ready for eternity with him in heaven instead of suffering for eternity in hell. You're going to be ready to enjoy the Lord's presence forever. Now, maybe you've done that. Maybe you response to what I've shared with you today. You have a response. Please leave me a comment. I, I really want to hear from you. Friends, please let me know how you're doing, wherever you are, wherever you're watching. Please leave me a message. Maybe it's at our website, honoluluag.org. There's a beautiful uh, uh, Waikiki Beach uh, diamond head thing going on there. More likely, it's uh, at our Facebook page, as I say every week. That's probably where most of you are. A number of people are checking out these Wednesday Bible studies on Facebook, especially some weeks. Uh, some weeks, there's quite a few. But uh, uh, if that's you, thank you so much. Mahalo ni aloha. If you haven't been there, just search uh, Facebook for Honolulu AG. Or, or maybe you're not on social media, and that's okay. Our YouTube channel will be a lot more convenient for you. YouTube, very easy to find. Just search for Honolulu Assembly of God. And, and if you have a smart TV, just uh, uh, you can watch it on the big screen. Uh, got some jets going on in the background there. Uh, if you have a smart TV, you can go to face, uh, excuse me, YouTube channel and search for Honolulu Assembly of God. You can watch it on the big screen. And please, friends, when you get to uh, when you go to Facebook or our YouTube channel, would you please uh, give us a like or subscribe, whichever is, uh, uh, whichever is appropriate. And please, please, friends, share our website, our Facebook, our YouTube resources with others so they can be encouraged also. If, you, you know, if you've been blessed today, been encouraged and inspired, please share that with someone else. Encourage them to be ready for eternity. Pass it along to them so they'll be ready also. We're going to pray in just a moment, but let me share one more thing I'm excited about, and that's this Sunday, as I am, I'm excited every week. This Sunday, February 12th, we're going to conclude our series, Welcome to the House, with the glorious truth. I mean, it's an amazing truth. We're called to be a house of prayer. Jesus declared in Mark 11, 17, that his house would be called a house of prayer for all nations. So please invite someone to join you this Sunday morning at 1035 a.m., either in the building in the Kamuki area of Honolulu, near a world-famous Diamond Head, as I mentioned, uh, just east of world-famous Waikiki Beach. Or if you can't join us in person, please join us online for the live broadcast on either Facebook or our YouTube channel. We live stream every Sunday morning at 10.35 a.m. to both workings. Are you ready to pray, friends? Let's do it. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, I want to be ready for eternity. Lord, I, I want to spend forevermore with you. I don't want to miss out on that. 
I want to be able to worship you every day in this life and enjoy you forevermore. I want to have abundant life now and eternal life forevermore. Lord, I thank you for that. And so I, w I want to surrender everything I am and have to, and everything I have to you, Lord. I, want to, I don't want to hold anything back. I want to give it all to you. I want you to be praised and glorified throughout, through my life, because of my life, in my life, and through my life, Lord. And I pray that for everyone watching. I pray for every man, every woman, every young person, every boy, every girl, Lord, that they would look to you and be saved, that we repent of their sin, that we declare you as their Savior, Lord. Their lives would be transformed, Lord, and they would be ready for eternity with you. I pray that in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Friends, God bless you. Jesus loves you. Aloha, aloha, keakua. God loves you. God is love. Well, there's more life-changing truth coming up right here, right where you're watching. So I look forward to being with you again next time. Until then, God bless. Aloha. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.